he don't have control. I said this already, yeah. Like when you actually look at the situation, yeah, hindsight is always 2020, yeah. But when you look at what happened with Ronaldo, you look at what happened with David De Gea, you look at what's happened with Sancho, bro. Within 12 months, yeah, he's shown us that he's not in control of what's going on at, at this football club, bro. He's not in control, bro. And even the Harry Maguire thing, if you don't want Maguire at the club, why is he still here? <laughs> Listen, man, people are saying more emergency meetings than wins, man. You know what I mean? Bro, that's that's bro. peak right now. Bro. <laughs> bro. It ain't easy right now. It ain't bro. easy. It ain't easy. Bro, it, it is, ain't easy. It is. It's, it's a horrible time, bro. Yeah. And you know what? I don't think it's going to get any better. That's all I'm saying, nope. man. So strap in. You know what I'm saying to you? These are the dark days, man. They're continuing, man. It's just one of them can, situations. Can we agree where... now? Can we agree that it's over for man now? Can we agree now, Saeed? I don't come think it's over. Over. <laughs> Come on, don't come on, Saeed. Come on, No, Saeed. no, no. I ain't, I ain't doing this. I don't think it's over. I think um, he needs time to, to, to rectify his problems like mm. all managers should do. Mm. Um, but like I said, he's under pressure. I can agree he's under pressure. But to say sack him now, I don't think for me is the, is the wise things to do, man. Because, hey, there's no manager out there that I think for me can solve this problem mm. um, right now in this current time. And B, I think players as well need to be held accountable. So, all in all, I do think he's under pressure. And I do think, for me, he's being stubborn. And what I saw on Saturday, and I was at the ground, yeah, I was shocked, bro, that the fans booed him, man. I can't lie. I didn't think it would go there. You see how other situations, you kind of like, mm. Mm. but you see this? When that when they took off, when he took off Hoyland, bro, I've never seen the crowd boo like that. From all angles I'm talking about. And you might have heard it on TV, yeah? But I was like, you know, I didn't even boo because I was that shocked. I was more shocked at the fact that he took off Hoyland. I was like, yo, mm. what are you on, bro? Like, yeah, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I don't buy into mm -hmm. it still. A lot of people have been saying, oh, you know, he's just come back from injury. When you're a young player, yeah, and it's your debut, you got to realize, yeah, you're on this adrenaline. You don't feel any sort of tightness, bro. You don't. Talk you feel like, it. bro, I want to score. I want to be that guy that wins us the game. Like, I don't feel tired. And I get it, you know what I'm saying to you, like, there may be an injury, but I just think for me, in that kind of moment, he's pumped up, he's ready. I did see fatigue for me, because at the end of the day, bro, nobody was giving him the ball, man. You know what I mean? Man had Rashford just, you know what I mean? Just yeah, but Rashford is the one it. that he should have taken off, blood. And that's why I say, yeah, oh, big up the crowd, yeah, get me for being this guy, blood. You know what I'm saying? Big them up. You know why? Because, bro, he needs to be held accountable for his, his nonsense, bro. This manager, yeah, has done too many things wrong in such a short period of time, innit? Like, do you know what I mean? When yep. you look between, when you look between the end of last season, like, even if you don't even want to count, like, the seven nils and all that, if you just start from pre-season till now, yeah, yeah. he's made so many mistakes, yeah, in such, a, <clears throat> in, in a, such a condensed period of time. You see, if you mess up over a long period of time, yeah, it kind of balances things out, bro. Do you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But what he's done in pre-season from... The teams he picked, he almost wasted a preseason. Because when you look at the preseason, yeah, playing one team in one half, this in the second half, not really implementing a style. Because our second team in preseason never played nothing the like the first team. team. Yeah, they played nothing yeah, like it. So it's not better. like yeah, yeah. so it's not like he was trying to implement something for both teams. It's like one team was coached, one team wasn't, and the one that wasn't coached played better. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he wasted the whole preseason, brought in dead players, yeah, and then we're seeing this. Bro, he can't survive yeah, it, and he doesn't yeah. deserve to survive it either because he hasn't even no. made a good account of a, a good account of himself. At least if you go out, yeah, like Scott Parker, and you're like, you know what, I did everything I could do, like, and I didn't get backed, and that cool. But this guy's going out like a punk, bro, because he's he's stubborn. Like he's he, doing he, this he to himself. Stubborn. I agree he with that. He's very stubborn, yeah, yeah. and that's where the concern is because his decision making was so good from when he got here up mm. until the end of the season you're like okay even though he made a, a few mistakes it was few and far between the way he dealt with all the off the field situations the Maguire situation the Ronaldo situation etc Rashford when he was late Ganacho when he had issues the fact that we won a trophy got results were resilient he was getting the most out of players we don't rate and he managed to turn it around after having a poor start to last season you go okay let's kick on from there but like mm. you said because he's made so many mistakes in a short amount of time like even the, the the thing that he did so well last season was substitutions I've said it before I say it again that our subs scored the most amount of goals last season 
So then the reason why he's getting booed for taking Hoyland off because we all know that's the wrong move. And let's say that mm. is the case, Saeed. And let's say it is injury prevention and he can only play 70 minutes. Don't start him. You know what I'm saying? Keep him on the bench. Bring him on at halftime to, to, um, to impact the game later on. And that's the issue. Like it is, it's a, it's it's bad. Like that was damning. The way we lost to Brighton was very damning. And the last thing that we had and we could hold on to was our home form. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm going into this game, even though I didn't think we'd look good mm, and it wouldn't be a great. That's performance. true enough. The and you know what I don't like. Fortress. You know what I and don't like about the Hoyland Hoyland situation. It's like if he's fit enough to start, yeah, then you don't need to take him off. I don't care, innit? it? Man can say doctor's orders, yeah. yeah. If he's not fit enough to play the whole game, bring him on. Yeah, that's you know, exactly like that. Just said. Bring yeah, him on, yeah. fam. Like, what's the point yeah. in starting him and then taking him off? That yeah. don't make no sense to me. It's either mm. he's fit enough to play ninety or he's not. If a player's not fit enough to give me ninety minutes, I'm not starting them, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That don't even make no sense because, you, as a manager, you have to make substitutions, yeah, in reaction to what's going on in front of you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? All and of this, like, oh yeah, it was pre-planned and that. Forget all that, bro. Like, it wasn't a game to take him off in. Yeah, and the no, plans change one hundred percent. Plans change, and we've seen him do it. That's the thing is, turn out we know you are fully aware because we've seen your substitutes all mm. last season impact matches. We seen it with players who we deemed not mm. good enough. Like I said, mm. the reason why I'm holding on to I'm not like ten hag out and saying it is the end because one we're only five games in and I need a bigger sample size, and two I seen him turn it around last season when there was no light at the end of the tunnel after them first two games. I didn't think he could turn it around. I thought mm -hmm. his manager's not going to last the whole season. So because yeah. I've seen you do this before. They were saying 10, 10 I've, I've, 7 I've, days. I've, yeah, say. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was 10, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 10 days and all that. So I'm still giving you, because I've seen you do it before. All right, let's see you do it again. But is it looking bleak? Yes. But I think it and was the, completely different. And that's why last season, yeah, when people were like, oh, yeah, like, what, 10 weeks, Eric, 10 weeks and that. I was like, nah, he's going to turn it around. This feels different. I said it already. This feels different. Nah, this feels like it's over. Not, this feels not, like it's over. It. The players just, ain't playing I mean, for him, my bro. Thing is, yeah. You know, my thing is, yeah, it's the substitutions. Like, for me, I know you don't rate Garnacho yet, but if you're going to No, Garnacho on, deserved to early. come come on a lot earlier, bro. Like, earlier. You could argue don't that he deserved know. to start it's the game, bro. The thing is, we've seen Garnacho impact game after game. Mm. Well, I to forget goals and assists. We're just talking like the FA Cup Finals are prime example. We were horrible mm. that game. Everybody was terrible that game, pretty much. In particular, our attacking players. Ganacho came on yeah. and actually impacted the game. And look, he almost right, scored. He, he was, yeah, the, only, he he was the only one who looked like doing anything. Like, you know what Ganacho's good at. Off the mm. bench. Whether we're winning, whether we're losing, whether we're drawing. Palestri's there as well. Why not change the system? Bring them both on. One left, one right. And that's another concerning thing as well, is the diamond thing. And that's why I'm really interested to see how he sets up against Bayern Munich. Because to me, if Anthony's fit, he plays 4-2-3-1 slash 4-3-3. So it's kind of yeah, like yeah. Your, build, your whole system is based on formation. Is based I think he of kind of waffled about fit. a diamond. I can't lie to you, man. What did he no, say he, about he the diamond? He stumbled across... He said he was going to plan it to do it against um, another team. Was it Arsenal game? Was he saying he was planning to do something because of McTominay? But obviously McTominay See, got injured. Then he said, managers... I wasn't planning on to doing it. Yeah, but, but you know I what it is. Yeah, go on, lie. I, lie. I think it's ball. And the reason why I think it's ball, yeah, is because Brighton, everyone knows that Brighton used the whip, innit? They, you know that they use the whip. Oh. Matoma is one of their most dangerous players. And then when you look at Arsenal as well, they use the whip with Martinelli and Saka. Why would you play a diamond? against a team that's known to play with width, bruv. It makes no sense whatsoever, especially if the top two are not going to press. So what would be the point in playing a diamond against these? It makes no... Bruv, it makes no sense, innit? So to say that he was going to play against... If he played that against Arsenal, we would have got cooked. What is he even yeah. talking about, and I, bruv? I, 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 I don't believe him because that's what is more concerning is if Anthony's fit and available... Well, he is He is actually a fit, but he's not available because mm. of leave of yeah, absence. Yeah. He don't play that diamond. No, that's a concern to me. But that's How what I'm many times you played? That's a concern. It's like your whole team and attacking way. You change the whole formation and the whole system just because one man is missing, and it's not even one man who's performing. That's the crazy part. Yeah. Anthony mm. was bagging in goals and assists, and you switch it up because he's not there. That I get. The whole conversation leading up over the international break was who's going to play on the right wing? Will it be Palestri? Will it be Sancho? Before, obviously, he's been banished from the first team. And then you switch it to a diamond. It's kind of like, it's either Anthony on the right wing or nobody else. That's a concern. Mm -hmm. That's a super also, concern for me. 
But the thing is, though, he could have easily just changed the personnel and just put Palestri there. And then when you want to change it up in the second half, then go to a diamond. And then that would probably make more sense, bringing Rashford and Hoyland and you got a two up front and then you go like that. That would make more sense. And listen, I'm not going to say it didn't work because it worked for 20 minutes. But problem is, we don't play 20-minute games, do we? We play 100 minutes now. <laughs> 100 and minute I wouldn't games. even say that it worked for 20 minutes. I would say that Brighton were just downloading the information in the first 20 minutes. Uh, yeah. That's, well, that's all I would say. So, uh, that's all I would say. We, we, we were pressing well. We, we we, 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 what do you call it? We were, we we're getting into the 50. But this is, again, the bar's low, by the way. Uh, the bar is low. But we look like we we're in their faces. You know what I mean? We it looked like we were pressing them high up the pitch. Like there was something going on there. But then after 20 minutes, the players just, yeah, you know what? We don't really know what we're doing here. And then Rashford was pathetic the way he was trying to press, you know what I mean? Leaving so many spaces for Ericsson. And Ericsson isn't that guy that's going to run yep. and go and get that ball, but it's not. So that's why I thought he was a bit naive in that regards but mm. i look at i think Pelesci was there man and you know what i don't think anyone would have bat an eyelid if he started mm. everyone would be like you know what fair play we're going for and we're at home as well why are we why are we looking mm. at what they could do we should be looking at what we could do like uh, use our weapons you don't do that little so at home as yeah, well yeah but we can't you know? play on the front foot yeah we can't play on the front foot yeah with this manager not knowing what he wants to do this is the problem and this is why i say that Bruv, he needs to be he needs to be removed. And the reason why he needs to be removed, yeah, is because he doesn't even believe in what he's trying to do, bro. And then on top of that, he don't have control. I said this already, yeah. Like when you actually look at the situation, yeah, hindsight is always 2020, yeah. But when you look at what happened with Ronaldo, you look at what happened with David De Gea, you look at what's happened with Sancho, bro. Within 12 months, yeah, he's shown us that he's not in control of what's going on at, at this football club, bro. He's not in control, bro. And even the Harry Maguire thing. If you don't want Maguire at the club, why is he still here? Now, yeah, why is he still here? The, the, the wages the, the, the issue, isn't yeah, it? The, bro, the, it doesn't Maguire. matter, bro. Like, bro, you see Pep here. Yeah? When he didn't want Cancelo, we got rid of man, bro. Yeah. It's not it's not a thing where it's like wages. Nah, bro, get out. You yeah. know, like that. That's what it was. It was, I don't want you here, dick. You should have put him in reserves. That's why I was. even done. Arsenal put Pepe in the reserves, blood. You know, like that. It's like, bro, listen, we don't want you here. So cool man are gonna banish you from the squad but ten hog just sitting on the fence you know like that why don't you just put harry Maguire in the reserves he would that, have left bro and again that comes back to what i said initially about the issues and like the way i like the way he dealt with the de Gea, the Maguire, the ronaldo situation but and the Maguire one in terms of stripping him of the captaincy but yeah he should have been moved on and that's what it and when i can't bro, look at the sancho thing do, and no look sense. at the Maguire thing yeah yeah the sancho thing i thought that's his first mistake bro. he should have never said what he said publicly i stand on that and will still stand on that and always i don't think managers should ever criticize players publicly i don't think you should ever do that because i don't think it ever works and if you're going to do that keep the same energy for everyone like why don't you come out and say listen Ma harry Maguire knows he's not in my plans you know like that i've told him he can leave he never but, done that oh harry Maguire is a great player this that and the other nah bro listen you know if you don't want him at the <laughs> club Stand on that, ten toes, and make sure he leaves, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? But you ain't in control, also, blood. No, but also the, this idea that, you know, training for me, though, but then you've got certain man that don't want... <laughs> 22 touches with the ball, McTominay. What, what is, what, yo, bro, you can train all you want, mate. But if you're on the football pitch and you're a midfielder and you have 22 touches on the ball, are you having mm -hmm. me on? Come on, man. Like, I could, you can be the best trainer... When it's off the, you know what I mean? But when it's on the football pitch and you're not performing, bro, that counts for nothing. But mm. yeah, he stayed on. I don't know. I think he stayed on the longest as well, you know. He came off when, mm. I think certain other man came off, like Lissandro and them man came off at the end. He came off at mm. the end, bro, when there was four minutes to go. But yeah, still, we're talking about training. I'm sorry, man. This is where, for me, it gets a bit inconsistent. I just don't get it because you could be the best trainer off the pitch, but when you're on the football pitch, you don't do nothing, bro. Like, this is why people get up to me. I get Casemiro's not on form here, but you see, he, at least he's trying to do something. He's trying mm. to break up play. But then you got McTominay just hiding there, doing nothing. Come he's on, always, man. We but we know, know Scott, he's that guy. We know he's not good enough. That's the that's the thing that it is. And people get two things mis confused with training as well, because you can be, you can put in all the effort you want in training, because that's what he said about, that's what he said about Sancho. It was an effort situation, but still not be talented enough. I don't doubt that McTominay puts in the effort in training. Yeah, but where's Rashford's effort, blood? We know on the pitch when he's walking around. Oh, yeah, that's listen. terrible. You know what I'm saying? And that's on the manager. You know what I'm saying? And that, like, Rashford, again, you're not pressing and things like that. He won't say nothing to him, because he'll score a goal, man. That's what happens, that's, isn't it? He'll score a goal and he'll manager. have his credit in the back, man. 
But his off the ball movement has been poor, man, throughout mm. his tenure at United. I, I'll be real with you. Like, since, since back in the day, I've been calling Rashford's off the ball work. I'm like, bro, that for me is shambolic, man. He was the reason why that, the first goal happened because he didn't close the space. Okay, mm -hmm. the defense, yeah. They're in. They're in. They, they. They. They have every right to defend better. Yeah, we. We. We know that. But the way Pascal Gross here yeah, just was allowed to just. You know what? I'm gonna pass that ball on the right hand side, and then Veltman just ran on, and then they just still. We didn't close the spaces well. Down. Everyone's walking. Watch the third goal. I'm not even kidding you. I watched it yesterday, and I was like, mm -hmm. I've said it about my United Ten Hag's team. The most damning thing about Ten Hag's team, yeah, which I'm very, very concerned at. Is how easy it is to play, bro. It's like, bro, man, are just not there. They're like invisible. And it's not even play yeah, around them. Around. It's easy to play through them. Well, there you go. It's crazy. It's crazy, bro. Man how can't tell easy. me that's not coaching, blood. Like, bro, like it's all easy to say, oh, the players aren't listening. But why aren't they listening? You know, like that's that. A, why aren't they listening? New, when, if you're saying that the players court, aren't yeah. listening, then why are they not listening? Do you know what I mean? Either way, it falls down on you, bro. Do you know what I mean? Because... The difference between a good teacher and a bad teacher is not the information, bro. It's not the information because two teachers can give the same information. But if one class picks it up and one doesn't, it's on the teacher, bro. It ain't the information. Yeah, Every time we lose, he always says, oh, the players didn't do yeah. what we asked them to do.